Content or buy everything! Not only the healing, to say that it's one of the most highest crimes when it's between two consenting adults <laughs> seems Hello. bizarre. Hello. You like fluffy animals? Oh, I do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just, do you know, I just, what, I mean? do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? When you compare uh, sorry, it with, oh. you know, child abuse or murdering or... What if you're in your house yeah, no, you see, and you four of your friends you, walk into you, you in, in your bedroom? You should have locked the door so they couldn't come in, you I see, suppose. see, Islam doesn't go by Draw what the, the latest fashion is in the West and we know in, it stays in stuck in the past, doesn't it? It stays so, stuck in the medieval so our, past. Our, our, no, it's not medieval. Uh, well, it is. It is. I'm sorry. In the 7th century. Thinking it's appropriate to kill fellow human beings and by the method of stoning someone buried to their chin in the ground, is medieval and it's barbaric. I'm no, you, sorry, I'm not going to accept anyone that says okay. anything That's else. not what Islam teaches. Really? Really? No, seriously. But it's used, isn't it, quite frankly, by in, in um, Islamic republics. There's one thing, let me just explain one final detail. Which Maybe is really, you're, really you important. want a westernised, no, moderate I don't. view. I, I wonder, well, what I did when I investigated this, I want to understand mainstream Sunni uh, 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 jurisprudence. Yeah, what the four schools teach, not, not what some liberal sheikh in California teaches, or what some hardline sheikh in Saudi Arabia teaches. I want to know what the four schools teach, and that's what I'm trying to articulate. And these four schools are? Well, are they? they are. They're, uh, they're founded by Abu Hanifa, uh, who, uh, sorry, this is in the uh, 7th century, and the, the, Shaf, the Maliki, the Shafi, and the Hanbali school. There are, there are four schools of thought in Islam. I happen to follow the last one, the Hanbali, I might have, which is the one that Saudi Arabia follows, actually enough. Um, but there are three other ones. The one that's most widely followed on earth is Abu Hanifa's uh, madhab, and it's the most liberal actually, and there's no death penalty for homosexual acts in that majority, most widely followed uh, school in the world of Muslims, 1.8 million, billion So one out of the four doesn't, and the three the others three. do. Really? Yeah. Yes, but remember, how possible is it? And you it? follow one of the other three? I, I follow the smallest and the most conservative, funnily enough. Yes. Why? Um, because, oh that's a different subject, <laughs> oh, no, a, we'll, we'll talk about that separately. Do you know, there's one final point, and, and there's a saying of Muhammad, uh, which is crucial here for judges in these cases, and that is you ward, and, and I'm paraphrasing it here, this is from an authentic hadith, that you ward off hadood punishments with ambiguities. Now, this is a, a Say that statement yeah. again. Okay. You, you ward off, so you try and uh, uh, obviate, you try and not implement hadood punishments, these are the transgress the limits of God, like the adultery punishment, etc., by ambiguities. Now, now that sounds an, almost an oxymoron, no, that you're saying, no, you no, ward no. off... Sounds like the British legal system to me. What this means is, I'll explain to you what this means, is that the, the judge, the cardi as it's called, is supposed to actively find reasons within the law why the punishment should not be implemented. And, and is that, words, in reality, is that what no, they do? No, no. Well, in which Are they looking was, for... Get out, Do you so. know how many people were executed for homosexual acts say, in the last 600 years before the 20th century? Globally, I, well, Globally I, very much doubt that, I very much doubt there are any statistics to even go are, near what, no, that, because these what things that answer are recorded. is. I, I believe, who who uh, recalls them? Well, I'm referring now to the work of Jonathan A.C. Brown, Professor of Islamic Studies at Georgetown University in the States. Who's, who's Where's done his some research. source of data? Well, he's a historian, by fact, he's looked into this, and he says, to his knowledge, only five or six people in over a 600-year I'm, I'm period. I'm fascinated what his source of well, data is. He's a nice so guy, I met him, that. email him. But do you know what I mean? Him. If there's some little village in Pakistan that, you know, there's, there's some little boy that's a bit effeminate, so the locals throw him off the mountaintop and he yeah, kills. He is not, that's not going, Islam. He is not going to be appearing in any Islam. statistics. See, that, that could happen in a Christian community. They could do the same thing. I think, uh, well, if we're talking about Britain, or, I think, or, we, or a, a I think we are community. likely to have a system where there is data available to record homicides. No. So anyway, so the, the point is that the judge, I doubt according, to, little boy in Pakistan. according to the uh, instructions of the Prophet Muhammad, the judge is supposed to actively seek out reasons not to implement. He's to err on the side of mercy rather than harshness. And that might be the scriptural now, whatever, but that it's, is. it's not the practice though, is it? It has been in traditional Islamic practice, say in the Ottoman Empire, which lasted for, for 600 but, years. But go to, but a, not, a, very Islamic state, go to no. a very rural setting, as I said, in the okay. middle of Pakistan, and then, and I just very much doubt they're going to be... Have you been to Pakistan? No, I haven't. Neither Meeting the prescribed... In America, they used to lynch black people. So used, the word being used to. Yeah, but, but that, that's... Not so long ago, by but, the way. But that, that's a, an like also. Like, what's the phrase they use? Yeah, and an also. Yeah, it's not that relevant. Doesn't, no, it's that not doesn't really gain anything to your case. But it's people are frustrated. So I'm talking about the, the principles of the Sharia the, uh, and the Asul uh, Fiqh, the sources of the law, and how they should 
responsibly and normatively be implemented. Now, if there is some tiny village in Pakistan that doesn't do that, okay, but that's not to my point, which is what they should be doing. If you get some people who abuse and but defy again, the law, and it doesn't mean the law is in question. It means they need to implement the law. They need to be more Muslim, not less. They need to implement the Sharia, not, not ignore the Sharia, to ensure justice Which is case done. do you take when you say about Pakistan? What do you mean, which case do I Like, you, you must be speaking on some basis. No, I'm, no, no, I'm just saying, I'm doubting whether the statistics... I'm saying I'm doubting that the statistics are there yeah, to say the whether statistics. they are or not happening. You, well, that's what we're have, talking about. You might have read the statistics. No, I haven't because... No, I'm saying I don't think they but exist. But you're using the name, I don't think they exist. But you're using the name of a country which you well, don't put have it, a evidence Put it this way. I have. It's not relating to homosexuality, but I have watched a video. But I have... Well, I'm not allowed to give another example. the Pakistan name repeatedly. Okay, you're... Country. Yeah, so I'm going to give, give you a, I'm evidence. going to give no. you a Pakistani, Pakistani. Come on, clean, please. You, if, you, if you're just going to scream in my ear, go I won't bother no, saying nice anything. Sh sh go on, say it. I'm, I'm can I speak? I'm hearing can I speak? Game. So I can give you. Well, I'd, I'd have to search it, but I've, I've seen it for myself in Pakistan, and as I sleep, it's. It was it was it's a Pakistan it was a Pakistani based situation, but it wasn't homosexual related. Um, it was a, a, a young girl, and the rumor had gone round the village that she disrespected the Quran. Well, I think it might be that she she'd use a sheet of the Quran, and and there was no jurisprudence. What's the word? Juris okay, Juris I know that. Can I, I know finish? That. Can I finish? I can, or are you going to rant? You don't know. No, I'm not going to finish. Don't she doesn't want character. me to tell you. You don't know the You are so predictable. You are so predictable. I am. I am sure. We I'm were having quite sure a sensible of debate. The, and look of what's the happening occasion now. you're talking about, it is Afia uh, Bibi, okay, the lady, the guy who wow. murdered. I can't he's, share my anecdote. He's got to jump in and share. Of course, share you it are for you. saying yeah, about the lady oh, who. Uh, she wasn't a lady. Him. She was a young girl. But you probably view her as an adult because we know what we know <laughs> what the view that? on that subject. Who was that then? Who was what? The lady you talking You just said her. And this is the other ploy. I'm talking about an adult lady, and he's saying about a girl. Who's the girl? She was. She was mid-teens, from, Who from was what that? my memory. You've gone off track, there's, there's Go no, in your no mobile, point. please. This is what I do. <laughs> time and time again. Get in the Google and get out spread. something. Yeah. Why would I waste my internet usage on you? Oh, of course, you don't have an evidence to back up. <laughs> just say yeah, back and don't worry, it doesn't matter. I'm just making it up because I'm a mad racist xenophobe. <laughs> you are. Which you are. Anyway, coming back to the issue. Ka-ching! <laughs> So, but you see, me and this uh, reasonable Muslim can have a debate without him playing the racist card. Oh, I haven't because played it yet. I think you're better than that, Paul. I'm just I do joking. think you're I'm better than to be so but sad I, I know that playing, playing this card is not going to allow us to have a conversation. Man, it it's would be factually incorrect, wouldn't it? And, boy crying wolf, it completely devalues those people that have suffered real racism by these Muslim numpties continually pulling out their race card. Anyway, coming anyway. back to anyway. <laughs> so talk about the, that the idea of the Hudu punishments is not to implement them, but to see them as a deterrent, a symbolic deterrent, uh, indicating to us the enormity in the sight of God of these actions. The idea isn't to implement them. I know ISIS might do that, but ISIS, you know, the vast majority of the Ummah in the world of reject rule, ISIS. If that rule is, no, we never want to do it, now, but we're going we're gonna to. What I haven't said, the by the way, is what happens if uh, a Hadoop punishment. So, so, say you have three, you mentioned the three rather than the four guys who witness a certain behaviour. You're right. Mm -hmm. So, it's not that it gets off scot free. No, no. It then comes down Just isn't from. killed. Hang on. It comes down from a Hadoop punishment to the next level, which uh, is, that is, something is dropping off? No, which is uh, a different level. It, it becomes. <laughs> do they do that? For it becomes point? then uh, a discretion of the, Why are you the judge. Shaking your head. So it's still punishment. It's still punishment. There is still punishment, whatever the appropriate punishment may be. But it's not a hadood crime anymore. So it's not that three means you get off. Three means you're not going to get the chop literally. So what would the next level of punishment well, be? Well, it, it would depend on the school of thought. Depend on the circumstances. What would the range be? Well, imprisonment, fining, could be flogging, could be whatever. I thought you didn't have prison. Yes. Yes. You do. Yeah. But Omar had prisons. Yes, there is. So um, it would depend but on. Not the, all schools. There are prisons, of course there are prisons. In all schools of the four you schools. Know, I've never thought that quite. I would imagine that we have prisons, they use prisons yeah, for, for punishment. So, so there's, there's, a, there's a range of punishments depending on the witnesses and the severity of the crime and so on. Take rape, for example, as a popular misconception that you have to have four witnesses. If a woman is raped by a man um, and there are no witnesses, 
her own testimony counts as a witness. What if a man is raped by a man? Oh, I don't know about that. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> it doesn't okay. cover all bases, okay. does I'm it? I'm not a judge. I'm just giving you the general point. <laughs> yeah, okay. Presumably, the same, the, same, isn't it? the same logic would apply because it's the same I would never thing. assume anything. And if he committed sodomy, I mean, that would be even more a, a, a serious crime because it's a violation of So we of said, I think you said we could talk about lesbianism as well. If, is that something you want to talk about? I love <laughs> a bit of lesbianism. <laughs> but why? But you must have said, it's never, it's never I, a I subject have, you hear brought up by Muslims here. It's not true. But they're always talking about bum sex. it's not true. In my talk, if you go on YouTube, uh, Paul Williams, Islam homosexuality. So you've, you've, I gave a lecture at the mosque in Israel, and I did you do a lot of research before? Yes. No, I just Me want, too. I just wandered in and just, oh, what do I think? No, no, I did a lot of research, and it's not my opinion. That was your excuse. It wasn't my intention to give my opinions, but to try and communicate what the mainstream Sharia position is. So, because uh, you know, often coming to lesbians, oft, often oh, okay. the 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 defence of the Sharia position when it comes to bum sex is is disease and and STD and all that sort of thing. Now, I'm not aware that the lesbian community has has in any way higher level higher level of STDs than the heterosexual population. And in fact, I would imagine it's lower. It's not to do with so STDs. It's, it's prohibited in the Quran. But, but that's often it's thrown into the, the pot that, that, by, that, by Muslims. But that's not the reason it's given in the Quran. It's simply, it's called lewd behaviour. So, and the Arabic word is actually, in English, for grinding. I decided to be explicit. Grinder? Is that where grinder came from? Do you, know, do you know? I hadn't thought of that. There you go. It's Islamic. This is where Grinder is Islamic. You heard it here first. Very, very, that's very funny. Actually, I hadn't thought of that. Islamic uh, grinder tends to be for gay men, by the way, not for. Uh, Normally, I'd be heckling, but I can't do it to Paul now. I think don't, don't, don't subscribe. Nice to be don't subscribe. I'll give him a reprieve now because he's been a good guy. I get a reprieve. Grinder is Islamic. No, for, 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 you may think this is a silly, childish question, but of the notable. Muslims that come here, and I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to name names, but, but there, there, is a, there is a lot of rumour, well I, no I won't because I don't know, there's a lot of rumour and maybe it's just frivol frivolity or whatever, that a lot of the Muslims that come here are actually gay. Yeah, I, I just wonder, do, do you have any insider? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not expecting you to, I'm not expecting you to name names and I wouldn't name names. Homophobic Steve, how dare you? No, but, the oh, Greek camp and female. Exactly. Do you have any insider knowledge? Yes I do. Right. Oh, interesting. And I'm happy to Always make this touching. public now. Wait. Uh, that, that I have that I have had dinner with these people. I've socialised with these people, and but I know them uh, quite well. Some of their homes I've been to, and I can confidently say that none of them are gay. None of them. Oh, none of I'm them. Sorry, none of them are, except me. There is one definite one. Just me. Well, we, we were always told there's only one gay in the Muslim village. Well, <laughs> I go around. I, I suppose I should is that your title? That, that should be that, your Twitter. Uh, is there any one particularly that you like, Steve? I'm, I'm not. I'm not gay myself. Oh, you call sound. But you talk, a, but you talk about bum sex a great deal, don't you? What did you say? <laughs> you call sound. Oh, was gay until, like, You're not the first to have said that. I did too. Ask God. The God. thought of touching I, something that's I hairy it repulses me. Only Omar. A well-shaved man. Oh, oh no. Well, now the man has named him. Omar is the is one of the most campest individuals I've ever met. I don't see him. Do you see him? His whole. The bum I know you shouldn't judge a book by the cover, as you said. But he, but he is extremely effeminate. I think that's in his in his whole demeanour. And he, he is vile, I agree with that. Well, you, you can be effeminate and vile. Oh, this is true, you've got to be on that. But I never thought of him as... Okay, I'll, I'll um, switch fresh? on my gaydar <laughs> next time I'm around him and see if it... I'm not saying I've got a strong gaydar. It's like one of those talk shows, you know one of those kind of celebrities from the 70s? Like, Maybe it's just an Arabic sort of... <laughs> I don't know. So I don't I, think it's I, not an Arabic thing. I, I, I thought that Arab men were gay before and I've been well, wrong. Gay going to be wrong. We need to, we need to step this Just up. Just because they're, they're, they're camp doesn't mean they're gay. No, of course. I, I know it's an obvious point to make. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. The we, guys I was convinced were gay and you know, they, they, since I found out they actually weren't at all. And I felt like, right, idiot. My gay guy is not infallible. Yeah, but how do you know? Hmm? Did you ask him if he was gay? No, his circumstances revealed that they weren't gay at all. I just say he was he standing like a teapot. I'm not going to want to say well, that. We have no, no, no. stereotypes. Dude, it wasn't just him telling me there are other reasons I found out. Gay porn being down the yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have heard that if you look at Google Analytics, um, the highest level of hits on gay porn sites are in the Middle East, are in Muslim countries. Oh, I don't know about that, but gay, gay porn is looked at more frequently, significantly more. You know, it's not just like a but, what, but half a percent. To be fair, 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 to be Steve, but just one question for you, Steve. Whenever we talk about Islam, and I'm happy to talk about a range of Islamic topics, it usually always comes back, in your words, 
because you bring it up to bum sex. And I'm work. It does. Well, okay, I could use you the word anal sex. You go on and but... on and on about oh. gay sex. No, no, that's I don't a, go no, on about no, it. No, you go no. on about Muslims it. bring it up in my presence. I've not mentioned it. Muslims you bring it up in maybe whether I can't. You have to put the video you back. I can't remember who brought it up today. But Muslims bring it up with me. They do. They do. Yeah, but you bring it up. You're not a Muslim. No, they bring it up with me. Today you brought it up. Maybe maybe that's the exception because you're the because you're the only gay in the Muslim village. That's why I brought it up. I think if we're going to talk about gay. I think it's important that at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu in Medina, there was a gay community. They were called Maktoum and stuff oh, like that. Right. Those who didn't have desires for women, some of them were eunuchs, some of them actually were very camp, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi didn't throw them off buildings. That he gave them their own community just We never outside, hear about this. Just we never hear about Medina. this. And he said, look, you have, your have. Own, mm. you have your own community. What you do in private, in Islamic law, Sharia, you can back yeah, this yeah, up, yeah. Is, is their business. They would come in back into the community. One of them he actually was a great songwriter for Sayyidina Uthman. So, so if you say that, I'm uh, sorry to say that, but oh, I'm a Muslim and I know oh, this. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. When you say there is a like whole like chapter in the Quran, like Surah Lut, <laughs> yes. the, where the, people who were in the sectors were punished. Not a pussy, God. hands up. Yeah. 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 Stop yeah. grabbing his pussy. His pussy. Is it his? It's It's all very sexual. You're obsessed with it. Are you sure you're not? Are you sure you're not a repressed homosexual? They have issues with homosexuals. You talk about this more often than I do. That's exactly. Oh, let's, we're, dealing with, you. we're dealing with we're dealing with Surah Luke. Yeah. Now Surah Luke, if we if we look at that, and yeah. this is important that Muslims oh, know this as well, right. it's not just. <laughs> Uh, no, she's got her puppy What do you call it when you are um, oh, no. uh, Sad. Oh, okay. sad. Don't get the brave. Yeah, sad. But through a loot was sad. something that... Laminated. Laminated. It was, laminated. Just, it was, laminated. It was, it was about, it's sad it was and about laminated. breaking oaths. In that time, your oath meant a lot of stuff. So they make oaths. They break that. They have a bacon roll. They would break people. Is there any content? So it wasn't just solely about sex. It was about breaking. It's very rigid. It was so perverse. No, no, no. It's incredibly flexible. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. If somebody, if somebody, there, if there somebody are, uh, there are, uh, do there are laws uh, misconduct fixed, while uh, uh, you know measuring and, and while the, weighing things, uh, but uh, is it allowed now? Because it, it's a, 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 a generation in the past has been, you know, carried under some kind of other punishment from the God. So do we think now, if somebody do those unfair things and mean things, is that fine because it was just for that nation? No, we say. And yeah. so you see, the difference is the, the, the laws of, of, of these laws are not they don't come from human beings. They're not man-made laws. They're seen as the sovereign greater giving us his command uh, by which to live. So in terms of the law, this approach, if you will use this approach, you will have to stop making things right. You don't have a board called health. Really it is just some people use it on against Muslims. You have Sharia. You don't have the principles written as Sharia. Okay, and you have Sharia law. You don't have a book of Sharia law anywhere. Yeah, so there's lots of ambiguities. For example, it's wrong to steal in Islam. You can't steal. I'm sure And in some circumstances, you can have your hand cut off. But the thing is, we're talking about this. This chapter has made a really, really good point. He's saying that the Islamic law, the problems he has particularly about the bum sex thing. He's, he's interested in the subject as well, apparently. Um, it was merely an example, is, is this, guys. Just, just a random example. I was example. talking about uh, precedent in the UK <laughs> law and whether there is any form of precedent in the Islamic Sharia. And, and can it change? And, you're, and you're, can it change? And, and of course it would be in the last prophecy. But you don't have a and system of can't. governance to rule on these but things, there, there is. Uh, traditionally, there, is, yeah. there used to be the caliphate and, and so on. But Islamic, not Islamic. It was abolished in the uh, early 20th century by mm-hmm. the British and uh, Ataturk and most different subjects. Um, but we're, coming always, to, we're always to blame deal, for deal with it, deal with the, uh, I think so. I take it personally. Yeah, so, uh, uh, anyway, so the, the, the laws say on homosexuality are seen as commandments or laws given by God, the sovereign creator himself, they're not laws that men make up, say, in Parliament, which can be amended and changed or even abolished. So we, we as human beings, or as Muslims, have no jurisdiction. We cannot change the laws of God. So the law of God, which says that, that uh, sodomy, for example, is an egregious crime or a sin when done in private, is never going to change because we don't... Unless God himself <laughs> changes it. We have no jurisdiction over that. Now, you said that is, is a God very ever change rigid... Uh, you said there's a very oh, rigid, yes, of course, yes. very, very rigid law. Mm-hmm. But you see, the, 
but you see, this is. Even, I want to give an example of the flexibility of the flexibility of the Sharia on this, because the law itself is immutable, by which I mean it cannot change. But the the application of the law can change. Let me show you what I mean. I think at the time of Umar or uh, Uthman's brothers will correct me, there was famine in the land. And we all know that stealing in, in the Quran is a, is, a, is a sin, a crime. You can't steal. In some circumstances you can have your hand cut off as well. And people were stealing because they were hungry. And what Umar did as the caliph, the righteous caliph, he suspended the Sharia in this, uh, uh, completely suspended it because That's, people didn't that were hungry. Anarchy, no, it didn't. Because people were hungry and there was famine in the land. So, uh, and that is part of Sharia. He did it as part of Sharia law. So you don't have to implement in a wooden, uh, literalist way. If there are exceptional circumstances, use discretion. You mean? You use discretion. And this 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 principle is actually known in Sharia. It's called exception. Um, uh, the exceptional circumstances can can mean that you can not right. apply. So, but for that example, was that, that, that came from a caliph. Yes, it came yeah. from the Sahaba, and it's part of Sharia. For example, can can let me ask you: Can Muslims? Is there a prohibition on drinking alcohol in Islam? Just, or, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, well, there is. Okay. So, but if uh, if uh, or eating pork, can you eat pork in Islam? I Maybe not. not. No, I want to you no, can you can't do eat pork. to survive. Thank you. You can do. Exceptions are Pork's dictated by these these circumstances. So circumstances can dictate exceptions. If you're starving, <laughs> you can eat pork. Where would they get the pork from? What? They'd have to steal it surely off the Norman Muslims. Whatever. But you see, what, that's what you're, I'm talking about the principle here, the legal principle. So uh, uh, these exceptions, separate circumstances, can dictate that you, the law isn't applied. So when you say it's kind of rigid and inflexible, it's actually very flexible to circumstances. But the, the, the principle is immutable. That is, that, that is always going to be wrong in the sight of God to steal. I understand. Always going to be wrong in the sight of God to commit sodomy. So what other, what other areas, what, what other areas would you say might be a problem in Sharia for a Western world? No logic. They might look at it and say, this stuff is immutable, we have a problem with this. Is there anything you can think of? No, you see, you see the situation of Muslims in Britain is different, but Muslims living in a non-Muslim society are obliged to Sharia to obey the law of the land. Yes. So you know we're not we're not seeking to impose God's law. That, 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 that could change, could it not? Well, is it? I mean, where's it, where's it going to change? Well, through democracy. I mean, people may vote along what, religious lines. What percentage lines? of the population are Muslim now? About 4.5%, isn't it? So 96% of the population are not Muslim, and you're worried about it becoming a Muslim society. Well, that's a bit, have, a bit far fetched. But you have it? quite. No, it's not Very because you've got birth rate changes. No, but what happens, and this is what people don't take into account, when, when you get um, a high procreation population coming into the West Yeah, and it, it goes down. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. I agree. I can't so, in the second, third generation, you'll almost certainly find yeah. that uh, Muslims will procreate, not procreate, have babies. <laughs> I know, I know what you meant. Had babies at the same rate as everyone else. Very likely. So we're not going to see this continual high birth That was the general consensus. When I spoke to Muslims, the general consensus was that they would be become more westernised and behave the same way. So, so I think this alarmist scenario about the future is just based on fantasy. But, it, but of course, in Islamic countries, that's not the case, right? In, Islam, in predominantly Islamic countries. Well, that's why Islam's going to be the biggest religion in the world in 50 years, because the Muslim population globally is much, much younger than, say, Christians, who are usually much older. So we're going to outbreed them, basically. But your basis for known fear on the immutability of the law is that Muslims don't dominate. No, no, hang on. But this is the same for most religions. You ask, oh, Orthodox, yeah, no, you ask Orthodox Jew, you know, when are the laws of Moses going to be changed? Uh, you can't change them. They're, they're, they're laws given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. We, we can't change them. That's true, but uh, can't change the Ten Commandments. in the countries that have been predominantly Christian, they've shifted away from... Uh, there's been a separation that's between about, that's church about, and state. I would say it's a bad thing. The secularisation of the West is a bad thing, I think. I think you're right because we've had mass abortion. We've had, I mean, I think a, you're a right. long list of, of things that have happened, which are really bad because of the loss of religion. I, I so we need that. to follow the Muslims' example and become committed to something other than secular, me too, materialist, selfish I'm values. I'm more looking at it from the point of view of conflict. So I'm saying, will there be some conflict over this? But there isn't conflict. There isn't conflict. Well, there is if you have legal conflict. If this something can't be changed. Well, you're, you're saying in the future when the when 96% well, non-Muslim now is going to become majority Muslim Well, if it's future. close, no. say it even gets yeah. close. I, I don't think you it's don't going see to it's a problem. Yeah. No, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's an alarmist rhetoric we read in the Daily Mail or 
first website. Well, no, but it's, <coughs> a, it's a thing we can look at, we can consider. You don't think it's even worth considering? Well, let, let's just wait nearer the time, but I don't see that there's a well, problem. It's a bit, a bit late then. So what, what are we'll you we'll fighting each other? You, you see, the, yeah. no, we're not, no, you seem to be fighting each other. You see, you're, you're assuming a conflict model. I here. think we will see a conflict. But why? If that happens, why? it might not happen. Why? Already, but Muslims have to live with their neighbours who drink alcohol sure. and gamble. Did you know in Sharia, is it possible for Christians and Jews to drink alcohol? in Islamic society. I assume it is. Yes. Do you know why it is? Please tell. Because it's protected by divine law. The, the Christians are, have a, a legal right to consume uh, booze, gamble, do other things Christians do in whatever they do. Same for Jews. It's protected by law. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? But in Britain, in Britain we're told we must have one law for all. But, but Islam is much more pluralist actually the western law is it's much more respecting of diversity and legal differences and different behaviors than western society is but look at what happened recently in france uh, two days or yesterday a woman was denied french citizenship to an nigerian lady right. been married since 2010 because you wouldn't shake the hand of the officiating guy who gives out the, the citizenship passport wherever they are i don't know where they are but um so, so it, you know a woman must touch a man, be forced to touch a man to become French citizen. I thought, what? What is weird shit is that? But in, in Islamic society, uh, if that was the, the practice of, say, her community, that would be respected. And they would, she would not be forced to go to touch a man to become a, a French citizen. So Islam is much more enlightened and diverse in its understanding of difference than Western society is, which has a one-size-fits-all legal system, as we see in France, as we see in this country. But we do have that intrinsic flexibility. No, you don't. What, in the West? Yes. All right, if I wanted it's to get very married, bureaucratic. It's not. No, if I wanted to, get, if I wanted to marry uh, two women, can I do that in England or France? Not America? yet. No, can I do that in England or America, for example, or France? No. No, I can't. If, you, I, go, if, I, go to, if I go to a Muslim country, probably I can. Okay. That's one example. If I want to circumcise my children, if I, would go, if I go to Iceland, it's just been banned. If I go to Denmark, it's already been banned. The, if I go to Scandinavia, it's already been banned. I understand, the fundamental banned. position is that it could be changed. So, so you accept it could be Circumcision has now been banned, and another closing down of freedom. In Islamic society, if your community wants to circumcise, you can. So Islam is much more flexible and diverse, but by legally, than the West is. It insists on conformity, but there's freedom within those limits, but there's a rigid conformity within that. Okay. So Islam is actually a freer, more tolerant system, civilization, I would argue. You would argue? Yeah. I'll give, I'll give you, three, well. I'll give you well. three examples where where a woman who was denied citizenship of a country because she she would she didn't want to be forced to shake hands with a man. But you fundamentally don't believe that that that's, that's, that's that, not that, that's ridiculous. There's no there's no tension there at all about that. You, your feeling is. There is. I'm saying it's wrong. She should be free. Orthodox Jewish Jewish men do not shake hands with women. Any women uh, who are not uh, they're married okay. to. It's the same in Islam. All right. But you don't see Jews being singled out and targeted for opprobrium in the way Muslims are. I'm sure there's a lot of because everyone shake racism, anti-Semitism. And they go mad sure, about it. Sure, I agree. But Muslims have got exactly the same policy. I deny citizenship over this issue. And she's married to a man in France since 2010. I understand. So the, the family are going to be split apart because of some stupid secular rule which doesn't exercise common sense. And this is this is the country of a liberté, égalité, fraternité, where freedom comes from, the French Revolution. So in Islam, there wouldn't be a problem. So going back to our conversation, let's not mention what it is, but homosexuality. No, not again. More bum what, sex. What's the problem there? And uh, is, there any, is, there any, is there any conflict with that going forward? Well, uh, let's look at this. The Roman Catholic Church says that homosexual acts are a mortal sin. Those are practices that are destined to hell. Check sure. on the catechism. Uh, so are we talking about Catholicism or Islam? We're talking about the UK. Well, I'm talking about the UK. So what's the difference between Islamic teaching and Catholic teaching on the Is subject. there any issue with it going forward? Well, of course there's an issue. You see, Muslims don't approve of these acts, but then neither do Catholics if they're, they're supporting their church. Most don't. If they were to support their church, most Orthodox Jews have the same view. But you're not asking them these questions. You're picking on Muslims because I, I, I'm not because Islamophobia. I'm just talking to you and you're the only one standing here. <laughs> because you, this is an issue that is uniquely pressed upon Muslims, but other religions also do, uh, have the same view. Roman Catholics, Orthodox Church, 
uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. They think it's completely unacceptable. Um, Sikhs, you know, I mean, most people do actually. But people. your basic argument yeah. is that there is no threat. That people that have a view that this, what do you mean people that have a view that this is a problem. But we already You're live with. You see, Muslims you already dismissed it as a, as a I do dirty dismiss, mal kind of position. I do because Muslims already live with neighbours who fornicate, drink alcohol, commit sodomy, whatever, whatever. But you understand, and, and, and they live quite peaceably with their neighbours in the same streets. So to say this is some kind of issue is laughable. It's not an issue because it's not an issue now as we speak. It's okay. You can have that opinion. I'm, I'm cool with that. Well, Muslims don't routinely go out and duff people up who are drinking alcohol. It just doesn't happen. Okay, I'm fine with that. But what I'm saying is you're, you, you seem totally comfortable. There is no contention. There's no issue at which we will find ourselves at a point in the future where this may be a problem. That's your basic so, well, 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 you say what is a problem about what? You should be very vague and abstract. Well, what are you talking Sorry, about? Sorry, it is a bit vague. I'm trying not to focus on one particular thing, but if we... If <laughs> we, we crossed that line a long time no, ago. No, I know. But talking about we, bum sex. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, let's talk about that if you want. But what I'm saying is, is He's talking about. you seem to be completely happy with the idea that there will be no conflict over this about in the future. About what? Between whom? Between these aspects of religious doctrine and... Uh, the uh, country that we might be talking there about. Is, there isn't know. an issue at the moment. No, there isn't. But would there be? That's, that's but why would there be? You, 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 you spin the story with me. Well, the, uh, the argument would be that as uh, Islam has sort of more of a foothold democratically, that people might feel the need to bring about Sharia law. That's the question I'm okay. asking. And what does Sharia law say about homosexuality? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Well, I d I, you weren't here when I gave an explanation. No, I missed it. I'm sorry. Ah, that's why you're asking this question. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll just give a very brief summary. Yeah, I'm, not gonna summary, summary I'm not going to wait through all over again. No, you don't. Ba basically, uh, the Sharia is concerned with acts committed in public, uh, primarily li liwat, which is the Arabic word for sodomy, literal sodomy. Okay. And and if an action happens in public and there are four witnesses, the actual act of penetration, then it becomes a dude offence. Then it goes before a judge, and then whatever. But that's, we're not talking about acts done in private. But what if we wanted it to be an act that could be performed in public? Is that a problem? Well, it's a criminal act now no, to perform in public. No, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, what if we wanted it to be? Well, it would Can be, we it change it? It'll be illegal. It'll be illegal then. On Islamic system, it would be illegal. It would be illegal. Of so it would be, there could be conflicts over yeah. that then, potentially. Well, there could, could be wanted. conflict now under this system. There could indeed. Yeah. So it's got to be conflict in our system, that system. But our system may is flexible. We could change it. But what we're saying is it's immutable. No, the, the, the Islamic teaching on homosexuality is immutable. Right. Uh, yeah, but that's not, you have a problem with that? Mm. Yes. Why? Because we might want to change it. You can't Why change not? God. You see, it's not Islamic law is immutable so much as God has given us laws by which to live, and we can't change God no, I know if he's decreed on this. That, but no one can. Well, those of us that don't respect that. Well, no, we're talking about. Well, okay, but from a Muslim point of view, we can't override. Sorry, I may have used the wrong word. There, we, we, have, we, we have used. Uh, we can't override God's decrees. We just don't know. That's, that's well, the very definition of Islam: is to submit to God's will. Going back to your uh, suspension of Islamic laws, uh, was it not used in Mecca when there was a gunfight between the? Uh, guns. No, they didn't have yeah. guns at that time. Yeah, no, 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 they, they did. In because 7th century yeah, Arabia? Were, yeah, yeah. They have no, guns it, it haven't been invented. In, in, no, no, in, 19, in the 70s. Oh, the 1970s? Yeah, there was uh, a, a rebellion. Thought, move on no, a little no. further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean a th 1,400 years later? No, 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 no. Okay, in, in it's important to get the time period yeah, right. No, no, yeah. I, was, okay. yeah, I couldn't finish my sentence. So there was a okay. rebellion. Yeah. So by the group of dissidents, who claimed that the Mahadi was coming back and there were the uh, and, and and they were rebelling against the uh, no, authorities. Sorry. What's your point? Yeah. What I want to find out is uh, the the law was suspended there because it's in forbidden to kill within Mecca because it's a holy place, is it not? It's forbidden to use. There are always exceptions at any rule. So, but they had to go through a procedure. They had to get the permission from the ulama, the, uh, the, the yeah. judges. So what, that's what I'm uh, trying to But they did, they got permission from the judges to yeah. go into. You see, what, what these um, terrorists had done, they'd gone in, they'd already slaughtered a lot of the worshippers. Yeah. And they, they became one of their guys, the Mahdi, as you say, yeah. uh, you know, the Messiah the, the, who was due to come back. Uh, and they'd already committed crime. Many, but in in Mecca, in the in the in the Haram itself, in the sacred area itself. Yeah. So you're right; they did get the Saudi authorities they got permission to, yeah. from uh, because it's a very sensitive spot, obviously, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they got that permission, and they went in. Well, actually, uh, aided by the French and the Germans, oh, yeah, yeah, if right. I remember yeah, rightly, yeah, yeah, I read yeah. the story, right, yeah. uh, using their technology and so on. 
and they cleared the place out, but there was a battle. But if they didn't, have, if they hadn't gone in using force, they'd probably still be there today. I mean, you know, I mean yeah. they, they actually had stopped the working of the, the mosque yeah. itself. And that's but a very took, serious it, crime. It took a while for the, because uh, yeah, the, the trucks well, they covered up and everything. They, they couldn't, they couldn't. Uh, no, but they also covered, the Saudi authorities covered up and pretend nothing was happening. And, yeah. I, and I remember in the story, it was quite very yeah. badly handled. But they have to take action, otherwise these terrorists would have just yeah. carried yeah. on. Yeah. I was not making a point, I was just trying to remember that. that. Yeah. But no, it's an example there of, of how normal, the normal rules can be suspended in extremis. Yeah. And that's part of Sharia as well. So if you're starving, a Muslim can eat pork, for example. You're allowed yeah. to. Because it's, it's a recognised, it goes back to the Prophet himself. Right. Any examples of that? You've mentioned it. There was a... Well, the, the famine in the land, the, the injunction, the prohibition on stealing was, was lifted. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, can, it can happen. It happens all the time in in uh, in day to day life when you're yeah. in a, an extreme situation, like in the West, for example, where it's very difficult to purchase a house without a mortgage for most people. Yeah. But interest is haram. So what do you do? Some people have gone to Islamic scholars and said, look, I need a home for my children and my wife. I can't get a house. I can't rent all the the rents. They're too high and so yeah. and. and you know, some of these scholars have said, look, okay, in, in these circumstances, you can buy a house with a mortgage. Right. Even though interest-based loans are not normally permitted. Now, that's controversial, but you know, some scholars have said that, haven't they? Do you know about that? Yeah, some scholars have said that. So there's an example of, of at least the application of that. I'm not yeah. saying they're right or wrong. But they said, this is so exceptional, this family need a home. And they need bed and breakfast. The only way they can get a home is to get a loan. The only way to get a loan is to get a mortgage. With an interest-based loan, blah, 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 blah. So the, the they can get a ruling, a fatwa that says, in these circumstances, you have no choice, go ahead and get a loan. But if I was to frivolously buy a second home because I want a second home for my chihuahuas and my grandmother, you know, no, that's not going to happen. You're not going to get a ruling on that. You're not getting picked up by the Dougal. You're not going to get a sympathetic ruling on that. Because it's not essential, it's not a matter of necessity of life. You know, life Who makes the ruling? Well, a, 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 a competent... Uh, Islamic judge can make uh, an Islamic judge. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, it's, it's a religious ruling. It won't be anyone else. Okay. And that happens in this country. And it happens with Jews. The Jews have the same process, and Catholics too. There's a, there's a Catholic uh, tribunal in, in Westminster, which, uh, which is run by Catholic priests, who rule on annulments, for example, uh, you know, divorces, if you like. So religious law does work in this country. Catholics have it already in certain cases. Uh, Jews, uh, the Bith, Bithdin, Bithdain, what's it called? The Bith something, I thought it was called nice. uh, And all the, the Sharia courts as well. The Muslims. Not just Muslims. No. But I think what we got down to was the, at the end of it, at the end of it we came down to the God, basically, making, you can't fundamentally change those rules. At, at the heart of Islam, and this is and what we haven't talked about, is yeah. Tawheed, and this is the absolutely crucial centre and foundation of all of this, is the oneness of God, the existence of God, and from that, all these things come. We don't start from the rules and then we work back to God, it's God first and then we work back to the rules. So Tawheed is the absolute central basis of, of Sharia, everything in Islam. But you were very dismissive, I felt, of this idea that there would be conflict. You, you're very dismissive of that, I feel. Well, I, I think in the scenario you painted, yes, because I think it's an alarmist position coming from certain fears about the other I know, taking but we, over. OK, but uh, is it fair, I doubt it, I doubt you consider this fair, but if we look at Islamic countries, predominantly Islamic countries, is there anything, can we not look at them and say that we have an issue there with... Uh, you know, that, that doesn't fit in with our way so of Islamic life. countries are Islamic countries. We're not an Islamic country. No, we're not. It was different. But we could be. Did yeah. you think not? Yeah, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. That's okay. I don't, okay, I don't get what your point is. You, you seem to be very fearful that Muslims will take over and it'd be terrible. That's your I'm not point. super fearful. No. It won't that, be that, happening that, in my lifetime. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it'll happen in anyone's lifetime. Well, I 4% think of the true. population, and you, you yourself agreed, the, the, uh, the birth rates are going to come back to normal. Well, I, I, else, I, I, so think you, I think it's a possibility that you're right. I don't disagree with that. It's a possibility. You're a Muslim, aren't you? Yes, are you indeed. Shi Shia or That's Sunni? why he's been arguing the point. Yes. Shi are you Shia or Sunni? Sunni. Sunni. Okay. Are you are you fearful of apostasy? Am I fearful? What catching it? You mean? Yeah, that he catches on. <laughs> are you afraid of that? Not particularly. No, it's not my top, my number one list of things to be afraid of. No. no. Will you be? Uh, Disappointed if it happens. But they are right. No, it's Oh, it's self explanatory Don't do well, I'll what you mean by it. Uh, apostasy, if you look at the dictionary, it means leaving the faith. So, am I afraid of individuals, Muslims, leaving uh, the faith? Yeah. I think it's not something I'm particularly worried about on a day to day basis, so I understand it doesn't happen, yeah. 
Why should I be worried? No, no, I'm asking you. Okay. No, I'm no, not no, particularly no, worried. No. No. That's good. No, I'm That's not. Good. I mean, lots of things in life I can yeah. be worried about. I'm not going to worry about everything. <laughs> yeah. So you'll be quite happy. I'm, I'm, if, uh, I'm worried enough about my job, my receding hairline, my the weather tomorrow. Oh, it's a bit yeah. too late for yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Same here. Um, <laughs> cross state. Cross I'm well on the way. Yeah. I'm not going to start worrying about anything in life. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Let's do it on camera then. Let's do it on camera. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Oh, that's the same. Other Muslims would be afraid of that. Afraid of what? That's to see. That's what we're talking about. Okay, well, I don't know. Are they going ask them? I don't know. Mm. I, will, I will, then. I will. I, I don't think that's something that we are afraid of. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's a, a recurring subject. I'm yeah. of anyway. If I don't know most Muslims, I only know some Muslims. Yeah. Sorry. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a case to kill someone about. It's not a case to what? It's not a case for killing someone okay. about. Oh, this is what you're getting. There are apostates here, by the way. I wonder, I wonder if there are. No. Um, no, very friendly they are too. We don't have Islamic law in this country, first of all. We yeah. live by the law of the land, so no one's going to get killed. Yes. People regularly leave Islam. It happens down here sometimes. And some of the apostates are still here and they're unmolested. Mm. And people return to Islam as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. It's interesting to know. In the I'm talking about the scenario. That it's interesting to know that in the Prophet's own lifetime, it just happens to be the case, there was a, a, one individual uh, whose name I forget who was actually a scribe. Actually, a scribe of the Prophet himself, and he uh, apostatized. He went off, joined the enemy, and started saying things against Muhammad. And for reasons I don't quite understand, he changed his mind and decided, mm, "Okay, I'm going to be a Muslim again." He came back, uh, apologized, and came back. And do you know what Muhammad did to him? No, what did he do? What do you think he did to him? No, no, no. Do you, do you tell me. I don't no, I'm guessing. Mm? Speculate. I, I don't want to guess. Speculate, so, no, because you no, know no. what you know about Islam, obviously. A fair what, bit. What, what did Muhammad do? I've done everything, so maybe guess. I need guess. Hmm? Guess. Here we have an apostate. Beer yeah. and married him. Here, here, here is. Here is the apostate. Oh, he married him. He bought him a beer and married, married him. him. No, you don't marry him. I'm being facetious. and silly. Yeah. No, this is a man who did the apostate. Who actually went away and spoke against Muslims, joined the enemy camp. Uh, betrayed Muslims. Yeah. He yeah. came back, yeah. uh, apologized, repented. What did yeah. Muhammad do to him? Well, you're going to tell me he forgave him. Yes. Right, he forgave him. Do you know, uh, during the Muhammad's I lifetime... I never knew he was going to say that. Hmm? I well, never knew he no, was going to say that. No, but I wanted to, you know, because you, you know what Islam teaches, but I'm telling you what yeah. Muhammad did, and that's the, what well, Muhammad yeah, on did. On that particular occasion, was he, was no, okay. he too, too tired? On, he said, the, oh, I'll let him go. Okay. No, 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 so what about the other occasions when people apostatized? There were several others. What did Muhammad do to all these other individual cases? 100% of them, what did he do? This is a matter of historical records, not my making this up. What, according to historical record, of all the people who apostatized during his life, including some senior scribes, other people, what did he do to these terrible, terrible people? What did he do to them? All of them. What did he do to them? All of them? Yeah. So he, he forgave 100%. them? 100%. Forgave them? Yes. Can, can I just interject? I, I remember we had that chat a few weeks ago. Um, and I looked up the case of Abisar. He's the one who became the governor of Egypt. Is that exactly. It? That's the one. And he became, right. and then, and then Mohammed yeah. made him governor of Egypt. I forgot okay. about that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. The only thing, though, I remember, I remember, I don't exactly remember the reference, but I remember reading his story. I think it was in Sahih Bukhari, but I wouldn't remember the no. number. I don't remember. It and um, it seems to me, you know, don't quote me on this, but it seems to me that what happened was, you know, Muhammad arrives in Mecca. You know, he's got his men, um, and I think Uthman uh, comes and brings Abisar to him. And he says, you know, reinstate this man, reinstate him. He's not, he's not your enemy anymore. anymore and then yeah. he says it three times. Yeah. And then, three, you know, for the first two times anyway. Yeah, you can look it up. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, uh, and then Muhammad doesn't say anything. And then finally, the third time, Muhammad says, okay, fine, I'm reinstating you. And then there's an interesting bit at the end um, where Muhammad tells his men who are around, who's saying, um, I didn't do anything, I didn't say anything because I expected you guys to go and kill him. Why didn't you do it? Okay. Right. So I saw that in Sahih Bukhari. Right. So that okay. was if that, if that, I mean, that's not the story I've heard. Right. Okay. And, and also, Muhammad made him governor of Egypt, which doesn't Eventually, strike me as yes. someone yes. that he wanted executed if they make him governor of Egypt. Well, I don't know, happen. maybe he changed his mind or something. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, um, that's a different story. Um, but the, 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 saw, but the point is that there is no known case in the right. era of the history of the problem right. where he executed anyone for apostasy. Now, I'm not denying that it is there in Islamic law today, uh, in most cases, most, not all legal systems, but most, that is the majority of you. Well, one could argue... I'm just telling you that that's yeah. the historical record. So he has killed, but not for apostasy. No, but it, it's not... Um, it's not as simple as that anyway. You, yeah. You're not supposed to just kill someone. You're supposed to be a, a legal process uh, where you interview the person to uh, and you're supposed to find out that maybe the apostasy is based on a misunderstanding of, of what Islam teaches or, or some other issue that needs to be resolved. So there's an attempt to actually sort the issue out and not just execute people. But most, most Islamic, uh, the majority of the opinion in Islamic school is that ultimately if someone publicly 
apostatize. Now, then there can be the death penalty. But there are some people who say that apostasy then is slightly different from apostasy now. It's not quite the same thing. For example, they, some scholars argue, like Jonathan Brown, Georgetown University, that apostasy then was more akin to treason. Because if you actually look at the Bakari Hadith, of all of it, it talks not just about leaving the religion, but also leaving the community. It talks about a, a sense of uh, sedition. Um, so there is a sense that today in the West, where religion is a private matter, where it's not a matter of allegiance to the state, it's not quite the same thing, and thus the circumstances have changed. And some scholars argue that. I suppose that one would argue here, I think you're right about that, I think one would argue here that maybe it's a good thing, right? To, you know, uh, There's a bit of an elephant in the room to be a private matter as opposed to... I can't see one. Not, not you and I, sir. There's a bit of an... Well, it was Muhammad's choice. No. When Paul gave the descriptions, it was Muhammad's choice. To... So whether, to right. whether to kill or not kill. Right. Do you not find that an issue? That it was Muhammad's choice. It was Muhammad's choice. So do you, so think, always okay with do you that? think that's totalitarian? But no, he's a head of state. I think, he, I think it is, isn't it? Well, he's head of state, by the way. He's right. not just a yeah, private right. person. That's right. And that's, uh, that's that's he different. makes himself head of state. No, he was, he was actually invited. No. <laughs> In, in uh, Medina, he was invited to be head of state by the, uh, by the Jews who came to um, uh, Mecca uh, because th they, their tribes were in conflict, or even at war sometimes, and they wanted someone who had a reputation, who to be a good judge, an impartial person, who, who would, if you like, be the chief of, of that place. So actually, he didn't make himself, he was invited. In that particular instance, or in all instances? In Medina. Well, there's only Not one so much Medina. In Mecca. No, in, in Medina. All, okay. What do you mean, okay, there's only one Medina. So Paul's argument is that he was invited to. No, that's, no, that's, what, the, that's what the historical. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I do apologize. That's what the historical that record says. That's just look at the early, earliest biography of and the that, track, I and, 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 and we're comfortable with that, are we? That he can be a totalitarian dictator. I don't think it's totalitarian at if all. If he's invited to be the leader. On the like contrary. Hitler was invited to be the leader. No, he was a very diverse. Do you know the constitution sorry, I'm just of being? You're being a bit of it. Uh, uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm rude. Sorry. I think so. Comparing him to Hitler. There are genuine reasons. Because do you know the constitution? That was an example. I wasn't comparing to Hitler. Well, you mentioned Hitler and Mohammed. Yeah, sorry. Uh, dictator, that's a bit silly. Um, it's not silly. Uh, do, do you know the Constitution of Medina? You can Google it. I have a no big idea. Page. Mm. Right. Well, the Constitution of Medina is the Constitution that was agreed in uh, Medina when Prophet right. was the head of state, and it guaranteed religious freedom, religious rights of all the people there, to the, to the Jews, to the Christians, to the non, the, mm -hmm. the pagans, and of right. course the Muslims, and that they by law were. Uh, they had their religious freedoms protected, sure. uh, and also uh, their rights to uh, justice and, yeah. and so on. Uh, th th this document still exists. Look, the document. Yeah. The, the, you can Google it and look it up. Yeah. But it, it's arguably the first uh, without having to play the jizya. That came later, doesn't it? Well, the jizya, at, no. least, uh, at least starting with. Sorry, I feel like we're attacking you from all angles. Um, it's not the jizya, no, because That's these people, later. Muslims no. and non-Muslims, were all part of the Muslim state. Right. They all were one Ummah. If you look at the source, yeah, yeah. they're all one Ummah, one one nation. Mm -hmm. So they weren't like there's a Muslim nation; these people join it. They were all Jews and Christians were one, part of the one Ummah. So there's no jizya. Uh, so, um, but it was a very pluralist society, much more pluralist than our society is. For the reasons I've already given you earlier on, where, where people's individual and community rights were respected by law, and, and it's a very enlightened society. So to compare Muhammad the dictator like Hitler is laughable. And it, it shows a complete okay, misunderstanding. The point was about that specific point that when you were given the example of him not him? condemning an apostle um, it was still Mohammed's choice that, that was the point there um, in that example he's head of state, know, it was it was state. so about, you feel that uh, their head of state is their choice later to later take on, a life later later on. On. the earliest that, mention of something what do you think? like the do you think, do, do you think you're asking me if I think Mohammed had a right as head of state I'm saying the original plan was for the you're clearly laughing about it so you're comfortable with it it's entirely a bizarre question but yes of course is it okay for in my own state would it be okay anyway I'm that's it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to. As someone who are who can who is academically one of the best here, shouldn't you have that discussion? Correct Kalat or correct K or correct whoever when they're wrong. I, I will have a discussion with anyone I respect. Yeah. And I don't necessarily respect people who I, I, I agree with. Yeah. I respect people I disagree with. Yeah. I have people here in the park I disagree with. I respect them yeah. and I talk to them. There are those who sell their soul to make money 